The Rings of Power showrunners wanted to do everything bigger than other TV shows. That's why when Star Wars came out and attacked the fans and started calling them slurs, they had to one-up them in some way, and so they decided to call the fans of Tolkien patently evil. That seems a bit rich for a pair that seems to have no moral compass, and think that these are the good guys. Take their wheels and leave them! What's it gonna take? You know, Malva, just once, once, it would be grand if you weren't right all the time. But they also responded to five different fan criticisms of the show, and oh boy, if you think the writing in the show's bad, you should see how they respond to criticism. Some of it's nonsensical, the rest of it is gaslighting and blatant lies. <laughs> to the point where they just claim that Deezer has a beard, because they don't think you've got eyes. And apparently, Galadriel can go to Numenor, because Tolkien never said she didn't. Oh, well, you see, that's not a lie. That's just disingenuous, bad faith arguments. Quite frankly, I don't see much of a difference. What makes it worse is this is an argument that's so inherently awful and transparent, I'm actually amazed they even said it. This same argument can be used to justify anything. Well, Tolkien never specifically said that it didn't happen. Okay. So when the Sith Lord Deezer comes out and drives out of the mountain on her Lexus, fighting Galadriel with a lightsaber before launching a tactical nuclear ICBM, which Galadriel tanks to her face. Tolkien never said it didn't happen specifically. Gandalf's also a massive fan of Oreos, and Kit Kats are in the world now as well. Let's go sponsors! In fact, the argument is so obviously awful that I don't think it's even a legitimate argument. It's just a case of, well, you know, we're not going to get fired for our own incompetence, so we can say literally anything. And we're just going to push the boundaries of how ridiculous we can be and see how many people swallow it on the other end. It seems to be what most of these responses are. It's like, well, you know, what you're gonna do? We're in charge anyway. For instance, in response to Galadriel acts too masculine, they go second. One of her nicknames is Nerwin, which means man-maiden. Okay, and your point is? Did you not even spend three seconds googling your own answer before you decided to crap it out in an interview? She was named Nerwin Manmaiden because she grew beautiful and tall. A match for both the lawmasters and the athletes has absolutely nothing to do with acting masculine. But apparently third, she doesn't at all. In which case, I would love for you to define femininity because I think I can. I think I can demonstrate it. Whereas your example of apparently the exact same thing is very different. Then McKay just comes out and lies. The idea is that Galadriel is a warrior. Her hair was bound up as a crown when taking part in athletic feats. Not a warrior, unless you want to go to the Olympics and go, on, oh, look at that army over there. The costumes look too new. Guess what? Sometimes clothes are new. You see what I mean when I say it just comes across as if they're taking the piss? That these aren't actually realistic answers, they just do not care? Elves don't have shaved heads or short hair. Oh, well, if he ever wrote a comprehensive style guide, then I would love to see it. Just because he didn't write it doesn't mean we can't burn it to the ground. And don't worry, because even if something is actually spelled out in the text, Things like dwarven wives have beards. They're just gonna go, well, you know, if you study everything, if you look in the details, if you take it as a massive holistic piece and try and find one word that you might be able to twist into a certain direction, uh, I guess we could probably twist it to mean something else and we, we just decided to take it that way. Not the way that everybody else has taken it throughout all of time. Because, you know, we're new. We're the latest people and that means we're definitely correct. Screw tradition and generally held belief, we know best. It's our party now. Because this is a show which gets articles written about it, such as Everything Rings of Power Gets Wrong, which I have to admit I haven't read, because I can only assume the article is infinite. But the one thing you'd expect the showrunners not to defend is just how boring the show is. And that was brought up as well. And while their only defense of the slow pace of the show is, well, it's gonna go on for longer, there's gonna be five seasons of this, and I hope you'll have patience. There are some people who still seem to have been taken in by it. I don't know how. Polygon actually thinks that the Rings of Power is holding Galadriel back. Why? Because she's such a lovable character that if only we saw her more on screen, the audience would fall in love with Rings of Power all of a sudden. Galadriel can save Rings of Power. You've heard it here first, folks. Because this is an article that thinks Galadriel has suffered constant defeats which have left her mostly as an embarrassment and as a disgrace. I mean, we can agree on the last bit, but constant defeats 
She literally gets everything she ever wants. She even walked into Numenor and demanded an army and got one out the other side. It's been entirely crazy. Even when a volcano exploded in her face, all she had to do is stand there and look piss off at it and it was too scared to go near her. I don't know about an embarrassment and a disgrace, she should be dead at this point. As for a profound waste to drag one of Tolkien's greatest elves down to that level for no reason, you could say that about everybody in this show. <laughs> it's impossible to be in this show and not be dragged down by it. Just look at Deezer. She started off as a likeable character who was just a family woman inviting Elrond round for tea. And now, she's a Sith Lord. Together we will rule this mountain and all others before our time is done. That Mithril belongs to us, to you and me. I just want unlimited power. That's why people are even admitting that Galadriel isn't good. She isn't a hero, but apparently she's a great protagonist. Although I have to admit, when they start saying that Galadriel has depth and emotion as a pivotal character, I do wonder if we're watching the same show. Because while her actions are not heroic in nature, they are well-intentioned. Yes, the vengeance narrative of I want to wipe everyone off the face of the earth is apparently well-intentioned. <laughs> Maybe that's why they say the road to hell is paved with well-intentions. They just knew Rings of Power was going to be made. She cares little for the feelings of others and is solely focused on her own goals and ambitions. Basically, She-Hulk. This is just the same character, copied and pasted into all modern entertainment. What's that? We've got a female protagonist. Control V, Control V. Galadriel can't see past her mission and her hate. It's basically Emma Watson on steroids. Because they say some of what's the hardest to hear is the cynical point of view that this is a cash grab. But this is the most earnest of production. This is a labor of love, and I can fully understand that. I mean, this is a job that allows you to be sarcastic to your customers, blatantly lie to them, and then call them evil with no chance of retort or consequence. I can fully understand that you love the power. Of course, I can understand why you have such a low opinion of your customer base, when this is a show that's simply too big to lose. There's so much weight on your shoulders and you're such a big massive brain that you can't physically comprehend why your creation is rejected by everyone with any sense of standards. As you may want it to be entertaining enough that people are digging into it and debating it, but so far the only debate going on is which episode is worse. But there is one thing I admire about the showrunners and that is their massive sense of delusion. When they go, some things get an immense amount of critical acclaim and win tons of awards and are forgotten the next year. Conversely, some things don't get a lot of love, yet become classics being watched 60 years later. I think it'll take a while for the dust to settle. If we wait long enough and keep coming them evil, eventually they'll shut up and like it. <laughs> it's a brave plan, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. Maybe if we start calling them things that we don't even understand, they'll back off. <laughs> and when one insider said that House of the Dragon was humiliating them and making them petrified at Amazon, they resort to the fact of, well, you know, I mean, the US ratings, yeah, they're, they're, they're only one slice of the show. Even if those are bad, even if no one in the US actually watches it, you know, there is the rest of the world which normally I would think was a very good argument. Except this show is so awful, I can't see it appealing to other audiences either. Is there another nation out there that just has a great cultural tradition of looking at a wall as paint dries? Because that's what it's going to take for this show to do well in any of them. Maybe that's why the comparisons to House of the Dragon has become a wearisome topic. Because they're losing. Imagine having something with a bigger IP and a bigger budget and getting annihilated by someone else. <laughs> I can understand why you wouldn't want to talk about that as well, to be honest. Probably the best line of the piece, and the only thing that makes me think that the showrunners actually understand what they've created in Rings of Power. Where they go, they have passed in and out of regions where pain and delight flow together and tears are the very wine of blessedness. And he says that means? Well, it's the idea that eventual sorrow can become part of the joy because you've gone through so much pain, now you're on the other side of it. And if that doesn't summarize the experience of Rings of Power, I don't know what does, that we have one week left, one episode, one finale to go through, and then we will be through the pain and the sorrow into the joy of knowing there's probably at least a year and a half before we'll ever get to have to sit through this agony again. That while this series was only eight hours long, to watch it feels like an eternity. And that means that if ever, you want to experience what it's like as an elf. You only have to sit through and binge watch this show. Because oh boy, will that feel like an eternity. <laughs> but all those figures about how important Rings of Power was, it's the most expensive TV series ever made. Yes, it's a billion dollar production. Now they had come out and quietly suggested, you know, no, it makes so good headlines, but it's not exactly accurate. Yes, it, it, they could have just come out and said it was 700 million to begin with, rather than a billion. 
probably would have helped. Apparently, she wanted to come together and make a story about good versus evil, and they kind of managed it. They made a story about evil versus evil. But hey, when you live in Hollywood, I can understand how those morals can get a little bit, uh, twisted. Don't exactly have a strong foundation anywhere to build upon in a good story, do you? Maybe you want to hire humans as writers next time so that they actually have a moral compass to go by. Because she thinks there's so much darkness in the world that the Rings of Power is actually leaning into the light. I titled my last review, Everyone's Evil, because it's true, but I at least thought they were trying to aim for some sort of moral grey area for the characters. No! They think these people are heroes. They think that the Harfoots are good, that Galadriel is good, Elrond is good, that all of the emotional manipulation, backstabbing, pain, suffering, not caring about anyone else, they think that's normal behavior which all good people do to each other. Why? Well, it's probably because that's your perspective in life. You can only ever really create from your perspective, your experience. You write what you know and your values will inevitably go forth into everything you do. And the thing is, everybody thinks of themselves as a good person. They will be writing with their values in mind. This is how they would behave. If you want to lean into the light, then you want your characters to make good moral choices. Which inevitably means that these are the choices that they think are good and moral. And now Deezer's turned into a Sith Lord. I'm not sure I can even think of a good character in the show. Maybe a Lindel? You did say you should have left the elf in the sea. I should have left her in the sea where I found her. The sea is always right! It's also a bit concerning when they start talking about Simon Tolkien and say he became a really good sounding board and partner. And when you're talking about a company as large as Amazon, saying that you're a good partner, it basically means we got away with everything we wanted to. We were the ones in charge. We were the ones with the power. That's why so much of their writing is just obsessed with power, even for the good guys. And they think of themselves as the good guys. They think changing Tolkien makes them good. They even start saying, you know, there are a group of fans that just weren't against us changing all the law because we think it needs to. We actually think it's wrong and it needed to be changed in the first place. So we changed it. That's why we're good. And anyone that thinks that you should just stick to what the book's saying, stick to what Tolkien actually wanted, well, that means you're just patently evil. Because you think you're fighting for the good, but don't you realize you're doing something worse in that fight? You're becoming evil. Because their entire argument is that you think you're doing good by protecting Tolkien. But Tolkien was actually wrong in the first place. And so the showrunners are correcting it. They're fixing Tolkien by changing it for the modern audience. Putting modern values into it is making it good. And so by stopping them making it good, you're making it remain evil. This is actually a statement done by people that hate Tolkien and hate the books. They can call themselves a fan as much as they want, but as long as this is actually their point of view, they have admitted that they cannot stand it. They think that Tolkien's work is evil by its very construction, and so the only way it can ever become good is if they personally change it and update it. And by preventing people from changing it, they think you're actually committing evil. This is why adaptations now are all awful. There is no respect for legacy or ideas or even any general acceptance that these ideas must have had some value, not just because they persisted for a long time, but were also incredibly popular. The wisdom of crowds has spoken. Enough people took the work and liked it that it persisted through the ages. And that means it's valuable. It has something to it, whether you understand what that thing is or not, and it makes it worthy of respect. But JD and Payne, they have no respect for history or heritage. They don't even like Tolkien or any of the ideas. All they see is that it's old. It came before them. And that means it's wrong. These two guys, they're new and modern, and that means their ideas are better than literally everyone else who's ever lived throughout all of history. And so by virtue of their existence, by their opinion alone, is enough to overrule no matter how many other millions of people. And if you stand against them in their objective correctness, then you will be evil by their own definition. Is it any idea that these people can't write a show about goodness and light? That they have no concept of what being moral even is? Because their entire moral compass revolves only around one thing. Themselves and their opinions. I believe this, therefore it is correct. And it doesn't matter what else happens to them. It doesn't matter how objectively wrong they are, how demonstrably they can be proven wrong, how easy it is to destroy their entire argument. Because they have faith in themselves. And you can't adapt somebody else's work if you think that you will always inevitably improve it because any of your changes will destroy it. Their same faith in themselves, self-confident arrogance, is exactly what they write into all their characters. It's why Galadriel isn't a hero, because she's self-obsessed, self-absorbed, and will manipulate and lie to anybody else on the face of the earth 
just to get what she wants. And yet they think this is light heroic behaviour because it seems like that's how they conduct themselves through the world. Which means it might be about time that if Hollywood ever wants to start making good entertainment again, then they need to get out of Hollywood. And get rid of everyone which is destroyed by the beliefs which it has caused. Because that is a worldview that not only can it not coexist with adaptations, but it will never ever create good entertainment because any life experiences of yours which come from that worldview that you then put forwards into your entertainment will be so repulsive to the general audience of actual human beings that they will reject it at its very core even if they can't quite put into words why the show disgusts them but those are just my thoughts what are yours let me know yours down in the comments below like the video if you liked the video subscribe more videos like this in the future and i will see you in the next one bye, -bye.